Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to another video on the Brugly channel. Today's video, I want to do another Backrooms Theories type video and talk about a few more theories that might be able to explain the creation of the Backrooms. Hopefully you enjoy the video and let's get right into it. Sub the Tugly, thank you. So first off, I want to talk about how all the pictures in the Backrooms are taken and how we have access to them. Obviously none of this is real, but let me have fun for just a few seconds. The leading theory on the pictures existing is actually not that different people took the pictures, but instead one entity took the pictures. Sounds pretty crazy, right? But it would explain why there are pictures of levels that are really hard to get to, or even impossible to get to since normal people can't travel through the back rooms through all the different levels that fast, it would make more sense if a specific entity that could somehow phase or teleport from level to level took these pictures. Obviously, we don't know anything about this entity or how they're that powerful or what they are or what their motive is, but it would be pretty interesting to see a entity take pictures just to upload to the wikis. The next theory that I want to talk about is called the Time Freeze Theory, which actually answers a pretty common question asked, which is, does time pass when you go in the back rooms? Well, this theory says that it does not. It posits that when a person no clips into the back rooms, the time in reality stops. And if that person makes it back to reality, the time will start right back where they were when they originally left. So literally no time passes in real life when you're in the back rooms. And no one from reality would know anyone was gone or know anyone no clips at all because time stopped and they wouldn't even realize. This theory would also mean that if you unalive inside of the back rooms, that you'd be sent back to reality right when you unalived and you would end up where you entered from. And obviously you'd be alive, which technically means that everyone would get back to reality at some point, meaning that you can't actually pass away in the back rooms. So that might lead to some plot holes, but it does kind of make sense, especially if the back rooms is some sort of place that actually isn't physical and is mental that left your body in some kind of coma state. But let me know what you think about this theory down below. The next theory that I want to talk about is called the carpet fluid theory. Now this one is pretty interesting, so hear me out. This theory says that the carpet fluid in the back rooms is actually a chemical mixture that causes a person to go insane if they touch it or smell it or interact with it in any way. According to this theory, touching or smelling it can cause you to get angry or severely disoriented and hallucinate as well. So pretty much it's saying that the carpet fluid that you'll encounter in level zero is actually what makes you start to lose your sanity in the back rooms. And that the back rooms itself isn't innately scary, it's the carpet fluid making you think that it's scary by making you paranoid and disoriented. Carpet fluid is also found on all of the first 13 levels, which would mean by the time that you're finished with those first 13, you'd literally be insane which might mean that all levels past the first 13 aren't even real and the people who claim to have seen those levels are just hallucinating. Nice. I like this theory. I mean, it's pretty, it's back to basics kind of thinking that there's only 13 levels, but it also comes from a different angle where you, you would never think that the carpet fluid would be the reason you go insane. But I guess the carpet fluid mixed with the isolation and everything like that would definitely make you go insane and could possibly lead to you hallucinating completely new levels. Cool. The last theory that I want to talk about today is called the Advanced Civilization Theory. And this one pretty much says that aliens made the back rooms as a bridge between us and them and other worlds, and that the creatures and the people that end up in the back rooms are kind of like test subjects that they're monitoring. This theory also says that the creatures in the back rooms might be from Earth or from other different time periods on different Earths too, or on different planets and that the aliens wanted to study them in a semi-controlled environment like the back rooms. 
For example, the Death Moth might be a huge prehistoric creature that used to fly around the skies of Earth that the aliens have captured and put into the back rooms. Or Smilers might actually be deep sea creatures from a long time ago, which would explain why they have glowing teeth and eyes, because lots of deep sea creatures have bioluminescent features. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Or that hounds might even just be prehistoric dogs or hybrids from another planet. But pretty much the entire theory thinks that the backrooms is some kind of testing grounds that the aliens made to study weird creatures from Earth as well as other planets. It's kind of wacky though because it doesn't really specify what the aliens are or why they have the motive to study us or whatever, but uh, who knows, it's aliens. And I know there's going to be like 50 comments saying these theories aren't true or that the backrooms aren't real. Obviously, they're not real, so the theories can't be real. But what I'm saying is if the backrooms were real, some of these theories might be able to help explain why they're real or why they were created. Also, if you comment something like that, your mom still does your laundry for you. And yeah, that is it for this installment of the Backrooms Theories, or the Backrooms Creation Theories, or Brugley's Goofy Backrooms Rants. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know down below. If you want to see more of these kind of videos, just let me know. And let me know what kind of videos you want to see in general. I have the rest of March planned out, but I'm always open to more video suggestions, obviously. Make sure you check out all the links down below if you want to go follow me on Twitter, or check out my Patreon, or check out Discord. Do whatever you want to. There's some links down there, obviously. Also, the next video I might do might be my take on the Kane Pixels Backrooms videos. Let me know if you want to see my kind of rendition or my kind of thoughts on the creation that he made. And uh, I might do it. A lot of you have been asking for it, so I might just go ahead and do it. Make sure you go sub to my second channel, Toogly. It's growing pretty fast right now. I've been uploading Minecraft shorts and Minecraft videos on there, and it's a really good time. Let's get the channel to 10k before March is over. That would be epic. Thank you all so much for your continued support. As always, I genuinely appreciate it. Like I say in literally every video, thank you so much. Literally, just thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. The channel is continuing to grow exponentially, and I genuinely appreciate every one of you for sticking around, watching the videos, interacting with the videos, and spamming bread emojis, and spamming the B emoji. It's a great time. You guys are awesome. But yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for everything that you do for me. This summer is going to be awesome. The Backrooms, I think, is just ready for this huge explosion this summer. We got a little taste of what happened when it exploded in the wintertime, and it was awesome. And summertime, there's going to be merch, there's going to be new videos, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully you guys are ready for it. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you later.